Russell. Zee Garcia, hello. What's up, y'all? Sam Healy. All right, well, today we're talking, today's a, kind of a topic that I came up with, and then <clears throat> tried, I'm trying to explain it properly here. Go ahead, try it. <laughs> All right, so the top 10 games that need to be dethroned, these are not necessarily bad games. These are games that are kind of at the top of the heap, and I, we are either looking for a better version of them, or we don't like the version, and we wish there was a better version of that game, or something that people would play in that genre. Um, so... There's going to be several games on my list that I really like, but I, I, I would like to see another game come along and take the mantle from them, perhaps. And I'd like to, to apologize to both of you for maybe putting games you like on my list. Ooh, all done. Again, I just again, got a new number one, Cosmic Encounter. Actually, my number 11 was <clears throat> Pandemic. Oh, okay. We're fine. <laughs> what, because it's 11? Yeah, it's okay. It's oh. not on the list, technically. So... You no, didn't but, mention it, though. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I like Pandemic, but I like to see something else come into that mass market like a, co-op a, game. Right, right. One that really is, everybody, is on everybody's lips. Right. Yeah, not that I think Pandemic's bad. I just think it's time for a new the one to show up, and one has not. Pandemic is still the king there, I think. Okay. Are we ready? Let's I'm do it. I'm ready. Number 10. All right, my number 10 is uh, a game that I actually don't like. Um, I've actually never even played the game, so I guess I don't know if I like it or not. Um, but I have no desire whatsoever to play the game at all, period. I'm just sick of hearing about it. So I want it to be dethroned by something else so that I can be sick about hearing about that game. Wow, I'm trying to think what it is. It can't be code names. Kingdom I Death it. Monster. <laughs> I am so <laughs> sick of hearing about this game. So done. <laughs> I don't even, I, I care not if that game just drops off the face of the earth. It probably won't because there are so many people talking about it. Um, so you think this should be like dethroned as the, it's currently the king of Kickstarters that made the yeah, most money. exactly. I mean, it is, that's the only time you hear about it is when people are talking about Kickstarter. Oh, did you hear about King Benjamin? You don't hear about people talking about how good of a game it is. You don't hear about anything else about except the nasty models and how much money it made with on Kickstarter. I'm done with it. That's my number 10. You're done before you even start it. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I thought about Kingdom Death Monster. I just didn't, I haven't played it. So, I, I, yeah, but I, I, it does seem to be the hotness, but I, I can't begrudge people for liking it. But, yeah, I'd like to hear something else on Kickstarter Not begrudging these people for liking it. I'm just tired of hearing about it. Okay. My number 10 is Eclipse. Now, the reason I put Eclipse on the list is because I'm always in the, looking for the new short-term space epic game. Mm -hmm. Twilight Imperium is great, but it's quite lengthy. For me, I found my replacement, that's X's Proxima Centauri. Mm -hmm. X's Proxima Centauri is not that popular. It's doing right. okay. The, the, the leader of the pack is still um, Eclipse. And while I think Eclipse is a fine game, it's not really a space game. It's an economic game yeah. that happens yeah, to yeah. be set in space. Right. So I'm really looking for someone to come along and be the king of the hill with this short space game. Two hours, space game. That's fun. You get to roll dice, you know, do whatever. And people keep trying, but none of them have succeeded yet. So I still don't, I don't hear people talking that much about Eclipse anymore, but it's still, if you say, what's a good short space game, I bet you most people online would say Eclipse. Yeah. It's time for that to change. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, my number 10 is uh, a fantastical arena fighting game with big monsters and beasties. I'm talking about Colossal Arena. And oh, wow, what a Colossal good Colossal Arena is, uh, <clears throat> is an interesting game. It's an engaging game, but it's one where the theme and the gameplay, the card play, yeah, are kind of not really uh, particularly thematically tied in that much these days, I would say. <laughs> you know. It's a game that I, for its time, in at all, well, for, I mean, the monsters have powers, and you're like, okay, I can see how the monster with two heads does a two-headed power, kind of, you know what I mean? But I'm ready for a an arena with monsters game that really sells that theme, that's punchy, you know? And, and Colossal Arena is still the one that comes to mind. It's still the best regarded one with that theme. I'm ready for a game with that theme that really delivers and is not just here's a 10 which is better than your 8 etc. You know that they actually made a space version of that game. Sure. Was sure. it pretty much the same? I think that well, was first actually. 
I don't know, but the space game is way more complex. They added mm -hmm. all sorts of mm -hmm. nonsense to it. But anyway, that's what I want. So my number 10 is Colossal Arena. All right, that's it. Let's go to nine. Number nine. All right, here's where I might, I'm not trying to tread on toes here. Sam. Oh boy, here we go. My number nine is Battlestar Galactica. Now again, I think Battlestar Galactica is a fine game. <laughs> There's no, no need for popcorn. Nope. Wait, you can eat popcorn? I guess you're not a Cylon. Anyhow, um, Battlestar Galactica is a great game and it certainly came on the, the tail of the show itself. It came yeah. out, I think, halfway through the show, I believe, mm -hmm. was yeah. when the game came out. It was really cool. I still like it, but the length wears on me a bit sometimes. And all the expansions were fun, but they didn't really... It's one of the few games I think that's just as good without the expansions as with them, honestly. Um, it, do, it sure sell like the Pegasus expansion. I did like Pegasus. You're right. Yeah, but Pegasus, only no. But that part of that expansion. Pegasus is part of the right. expansion. It felt like for everything that did right, they added one thing that everyone was like, "Yeah, I don't want to play with that part." Well, anyway, true. If someone says, "What's a good game with traders and stuff that feels like a meaty game?" There's a lot of light ones out there. They came out right. with a lot of light trader games. Yeah. But there's not many meaty ones. I mean, other than Shadows Over Camelot and. Um, Battlestar Winter. Galactica. Yeah, Dead of Winter's close, but Dead of Winter, they make almost everyone a traitor. That's how they handle that. Yeah. You're some sort of traitor. So I'd like to see something come along to replace Battlestar Galactica. I guess Dead of Winter, oh. I don't know. Having, I don't know, having, having a secret objective doesn't make you a traitor. No, no, I, I know, I know. It just kind of, it made everyone feel like they were traitors. It makes you, it, it makes, makes everyone, everyone look suspicious, like a traitor, I guess. Sure, I guess. I, maybe Battlestar so. attempts to do that, too. Well, either way, I'd like to see another one of those games come out, and now I feel like I've been, I forgot about Dead of Winter. What is wrong with me? Let's go do yours. <laughs> All right, my number nine I is... I said Pandemic in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> then my number nine is Suddenly Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> no, my number nine is Splendor. Splendor. I knew, I knew one or both of you would put this on Well, your again, list. Splendor is uh, it's a, it's a <laughs> critical darling, which is fine. I don't begrudge anyone enjoying the game. I just want something like that. I do not. I want something like it with more theme tied in with a little even better like not better even think a more engaging theme would be better i think you misspoke you said more theme uh, a theme. theme a theme would be some better. semblance something that that, looks, that feels like theme maybe theme yeah poker even chips it, by the way not theme okay <laughs> i don't want to hear about how nice the poker chips are anymore uh, i get it they're nice if you make the cards out of that same stuff, I'll be impressed, okay? If I can just shuffle the cards into, like, you know, big plastic squares. Is there such a thing as, like, poker chip cards? I don't know. They don't had... casinos give you those square things that you use as, like, a huge bid or whatever? Now you're getting that mixed up with Battlestar Galactica. No, no, I'm seeing, I've seen those in movies. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Splendor. I, I, I'm thinking here what needs to come along and replace it is something short. Turns are quick. It's engaging, but it has... Theme. Well, Cat Splendor does. Century's yeah. going to do that. I just don't think Century's going to fix your theme problem. Well, right, which I haven't played. It might, you know, it might do something similar, and, and I might find it more engaging. But that's the thing that's missing for me there is I'm doing all this stuff. It's quick. It's, you know, I, I'm trying to be strategic, but I'm not involved. That's what I want. Right. My number nine, Splendor. All right, my number eight. Nine. Um, nine. I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a little bit of a foreshadow. <laughs> But, uh, my number nine is a uh, is, is currently sitting atop the uh, current party game pile that everybody loves playing. This party you said game said that word pile very it, deliberately. It is a pile, um, a pile of cards that apparently <laughs> you. This is a pile of cards <laughs> that apparently you just sit and stare at for most of the game. <laughs> And code names needs to be replaced by something else because I have absolutely no clue why this game is so popular. And don't tell me, oh, because it's fun, because that's just a cop out. Um, I've played the game. I've watched the game being played. And it is, for me, I got it. It's not fun. It doesn't even look like it's fun. It just is there and there's people staring at things on a on a table quietly well they're not bothering for your a game very at least. long time i, I just know that for a codenames game i guess that's true i mean i 
I'm surprised this is on your list at number nine. I thought this well, was like number one. <laughs> I was I was trying to get all the nasty oh, okay. feelings out of the way first. <laughs> Um, it gets better, folks. Yeah, it gets better. I'm not really grumpy. It's just this half of my list is the grumpy half. Oh, that's um, I guess it's better than the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine. So, that's good. Anyway, I, I really, I don't, I don't even really care if it's in the same room as you. Mechanic oh. field uh, of of games. Um, I just want something to replace. The code, code names. names, pictures. The, have you seen it? Have I, you played? I have it? seen it. I have not. Um, Cause I, mainly because of the first name in its title. No, I get that. I've just written it off. It's the same mechanism for sure, right? It, it definitely looks more fun, though. Because there's pictures on yeah, the Yeah, you're board. looking at a board Instead with like a words. bunch of weird drawings, yeah. I can't read this game. And they're kind of pictures. bizarre drawings. Like they took, almost every drawing is like two weird things mashed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you'll look at them and it's, yeah, they're grayscale, which... Again. It looks boring, but they did that for a very specific reason, so I can't go like, <coughs> red, three. What's well, a three red card? They did that. It, it fixes the game, which would make it weird, but I would say at least try it once. It, oh. might, it might fix what, you're, what you hate about code I names. will try it once. Just don't play with code names, snooty people, and they're out there. They're all over the place. Yeah. What we One of the reasons it made my it's list. It's unfortunate that there's like that many people out there who are like who, who, who will say the whole you're playing a party game, nose turned up. <laughs> I shall be playing code names from Vlada Kvatel. And that's okay. Come on. One of these days we're gonna have some we're gonna have to make a list of all the games that we said we're gonna eventually get around to playing. It's probably Never pretty long. Do. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go to eight. Number eight. All right, my number eight is a classic game that I still don't think any game has come along and, and done quite what it does. This is Catan, or for the old uh, folks, Settlers of Catan. And I've yet to have a game come along that really nails trading among each other in a fashion that is short and engaging. That's both, right? Because the only other thing I could think of were really long games, like very serious, uh, stoic Euro games that have some trading, but it's like, I'll give you, you know, this thing to allow me a piece of your turn, good sir, that thing, which is not fun. Or... That was a very specific game, but all right. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Genoa. And uh, the other only thing I can think of is, is Bonanza, which is too long for what it is, unfortunately. It's a, it's a simple card game, oh, but it really is too fun. Oh, wait, you don't like Bonanza that much. Bonanza's no. too long for what it is. Bonanza with more than, like, five players is you asking for trouble. Okay, that okay, I Okay, that's with. just, that's attempted suicide. Yeah. Playing Bonanza with more than Which five players. Which is not players. cool. I mean, it's, it's like a little that's card a game. Four, it should be fast. It's a four-player card game. It should be faster. Yeah. So, it's fine with I have not players. yet seen a Catan-like game that really hones in on the trading. A bunch of games do that resource production... A bunch of games do that. But no game has nailed that simple trading. Where's that game? There needs to be a good trading game that finally comes along and says, we can put Catan to rest. You want trading? This is good, simple, family weight trading. I've always thought that the trading in Catan was lackluster at best. But that's, I mean, that's the one thing that people hone in on in that game. That is what people like. Best it's not the, game. like, yeah, oh, I, mean, I rolled a nade, I, I got grass. Yeah, I, got I, that, mean, but uh, I mean, I mean, it, it just seems so, I mean, it's like hate trading sometimes because uh, you, at, at a certain point, you stop trading with that person. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You stop trading with that person. And now, nobody's trading with anybody. I'll gladly trade you six wheat and then play my Monopoly card. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. I'm, I'm just... Uh, trading is, that was the one thing that I never really understood why people look to Catan for a trading game. Never understood it. Well, it's not that many, like though. It's not that many trading games. And that's no, what I'm talking so. about. I want there to it's come... A, it's a mechanic, though. I, I, yeah, I guess yeah, it's, yeah. It's hard to base an entire game around that one central... Well, dethroning Catan. Again, dethroning... I'm with you, I'm with you dethroning Catan. I, I mean, if it... It's that... But, it dies but that's death, the thing. The dice system has been done... Yeah. The board hexagon thing, whatever. We we've we've nuked Catan from that point of view. Coliseum has a pretty strong trading mechanism in it. 
and it's very similar. But yeah, it's but not it's family way involved, I think. Right? I'm talking about a game that's going to slide in there and be like, hey, you want to play the intro game yeah. that's going to be interactive. We still yeah. often go back to Catan. Something mm -hmm. needs to come along that does trading right, yeah. and we have put this thing to rest. So okay. that is my number eight. Katan. What's your number eight? My number eight is our first crossover, I believe. <laughs> oh, I don't think you guys are going to cross over with me. I don't think you guys are going to um, cross over me at all, actually. Uh, did for put, everything that Z said on Splendor, um, that's what my number eight is, Splendor. I, I, I do not understand um, why this game is so popular. Poker chips. Uh, I, and if, P -p -p Poker chips. I just don't understand it at all. It It's boring to me. Um, if, if we're going to have a better game with Splendor, it needs theme. Not a better theme, because currently Splendor has no theme. It has pictures that are supposed to be theme, but they aren't. Um, I don't mind the gameplay. I understand how you're trying to collect sets and that type of stuff. Right, right. I get that. Set collection's a pretty fun mechanic, actually. That's what basically Ticket to Ride is. Mm -hmm. And look how popular that one is, too. So I'm not talking about the mechanics i'm talking about there just needs to be a better version of what this game does um so that again like code names and kingdom death monster everybody can shut up about it so that's my number eight splendor to clarify not everyone in dice Tower hates splendor some of us really like it just clarifying it was their sheep <laughs> so my number eight is a game i like a lot but it's a genre that needs more in it and this one needs to be replaced i guess to some degree not sentinels of the multiverse I really liked superhero theming. Mm -hmm. And we got Legendary, which does the Marvel deck building, but that, as much as I love Legendary, it's the, the game is first, the theme is second, sure, right? right. Um, and there's the Dice Masters, and again, the game is first, theme second. I love the Marvel theming, but I also like original superhero stuff, and Sentinels has that. The problem is, is that there's nothing else really out there. We got DC deck building, we got, most of the superhero games are very lackluster. Sentinels is a fine game, Although the app showed how much better it was as an app than a game. Um, because it handles a lot of that bookkeeping stuff. Sure. I love there to be a really great superhero game come along that everyone just goes gaga over, which is about original superheroes. So, so that's the, what you want. The new the, new original superheroes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like Sentinels a lot. It's still in my collection, but I want something to dethrone it. I want something better. So you but want if, like you want like non IP Yeah. Superheroes. I already got Marvel. Yeah, but you if know. someone came out with Sentinels with Iron Man, which is clearly like one okay, of the ones well, they're no ripping kidding, off, I would buy that. Play that would you didn't. be into that? Yeah, I would be. But so you just want a superhero game that feels like superheroes but instead I, of like some, some game they put superheroes into. And I realize that's a very difficult thing to do. Superhero powers have a hard time being put into a board game frame. They have a hard time being put into an RPG frame. They're almost supernatural. I mean, well, right, sure. I mean, they are in very many cases. Right, so it's hard to like put rules around that. Yeah. Um, but still, I would like to see something along that line. So, Sentinels of the Multiverse, my number eight. Number seven. All right, let's keep on knocking these sacred cows down, shall we? My number Ooh. seven is the. Area control game that everybody keeps talking about still, even though this is almost 20 years old now. No, wait. This is 22 years old, if uh, I'm not mistaken. Uh, no. El Grande. <laughs> Here's the deal. I actually ah. thought about this one, right? I thought, oh, El Grande. And I was going to listen. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm fine with El Grande being top of the heap. It doesn't need to be replaced. No, it needs to be replaced. <laughs> it's 22 years old. It's got a really boring My theme. Turn. Yeah, you eat the popcorn now. Yeah, but you it's, like El Grande, right? It's okay. Can't even, can't even look at you. El Grande's okay, but it's like, you it's literally... You worship the altar of El Grande! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa. El Grande is literally, as far as we understand that mecha mechanism to, to be, the first area control game. As far as I can tell, yes. As far as, like, we, you know, uh, I mean, attribute not counting qualities that, to right, right, that right. mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. It's the first one ever. Imagine if Cosmic Encounter was okay. I don't like know what the you're only, say, yeah, I don't know wrong. where I'm going with that. He doesn't, he doesn't like it, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Words back in me. Uh, no, I just, I just, I think there needs to be. There's a lot of area uh, control games out there. Area majority, whatever. 
there needs to be one that comes along and, and is thematic enough, but also can reach a wide enough audience to finally dethrone El Grande. Because there have been some. Like, for example, one for me I really, really like is Mission Red Planet. But Mission Red Planet is too themed to really have that wide appeal to everybody, right? Some people won't like the sci-fi. Some people, some people are going to find the character selection stuff too mean or too complex or too esoteric or whatever. So there needs to be a game that comes along that finally does area control very well and with a, an appealing theme. Imagine, I'm thinking here, like a Ticket to Ride style game that is not a connection game, it's an area control game. Now think about that, where you're controlling cities on the map. That game, that's what I want to come along and dethrone El Grande. Let's get on this, Alan Moon. You can do something else rather than connect cities, man. Come on. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. Anyway, he can do it. The man can do it. All right, that's well, my seven. I'm going to continue on the games that I like, but I like to see them <clears throat> change or dethroned. And my number seven is Formula D or Formula Day, whichever version of it. Hmm. Um, I like Formula D a lot. Yeah. And there's a lot of racing games. There's some I like better, like right behind me, I got Thunder Alley. That's a I, that's one of my favorite racing games. Mm -hmm. Right from right. But sometimes I just want to roll dice and see the cars <coughs> go. Right. A lot of these games are how realistic you go around these right. curves. It's more I want something that's fast than... and fun. Formula D is is really close to that. Right. Switching gears and going around. It, it's not but, very fast though. Yeah. Right. It can it can bog you down. You want it to and be I want faster. This, I want there to be a fast, fun racing game that everybody's like talking about. So many of these racing games come out, and barely anyone plays them, right? They, they just don't meet a big portion of the audience. And they're almost always longer than they say they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Like, right. oh, this one's only 30 minutes. Oh, I meant two hours. Right. This one's yeah, an hour. lap. 30 minutes per lap, and you play four. Or something. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And Formula D is probably still the most popular racing game out there. There's a lot. And I know people are going to write in the comments, oh, what about Formula this, Formula that, you know, all these. But those games are just not that popular. I want a game that comes that's fast, simple, fun, has excitement to it, just in case someone says that um, new bike racing game. Um, Rouge? Flamme Rouge. Flamme Rouge is fine, but it's not, it's, to me, it lacked that excitement of, oh, what's going to happen? Am I going to pass you this or not? I'm that's still on a bicycle. What about a, like a, a dice version of Ave Caesar? Yeah, again, I want something that people are like, woo. Like, I, could, I want something I could teach pe people who don't play Hobby games. Caesar's all about the card play. Yeah, 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 right. You know, but, I mean, that would mess with distribution. That's yeah, the only would, thing. Yeah. What if you had a dice bag and you pulled out a die and got to roll it? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe even go with, like, a real-time aspect, you know? <clears throat> I mean, like, the dice are all the same shape, mm. but they have different faces on them. Ooh, ooh, this is... <laughs> if you had a real-time aspect where all the players at the same time, you have, like, a little tray in front of you, and you draw a die, you roll it, you stick it in the first spot... Roll die, boom, stick it, and then you resolve a few. We're designing games right yeah, here baby. in front of you <laughs> that will never see that. the light of day. Oh, these <laughs> ideas are amazing. All Get, copyrighted by Dice Tower. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my number seven is a game that uh, I don't. I don't know that it's currently sitting on the top of any um, hotness list or anything like that. But it definitely has the historical hotness to it. And I'm talking about HeroScape. HeroScape needs to be redone. And my main pick with HeroScape, I'm, I'm cool with, you know, all of the miniatures. And I'm cool with them being pre-painted miniatures. I'm even cool with the terrain the way it is. But, man, does it take a long time to set up and pull down. I mean, you think twice about just leaving that game set up. What did you think about Magic the Gathering then? Because that didn't Well, see, that's the thing. Up. I was thinking about that. Magic the Gathering came along in the uh, arena, the Planeswalkers and all that. And I think they were trying to improve upon that because they gave you a oh. board. They they gave you a board, that and that was cheaper. <laughs> that was I know. Yeah, that was that most of the terrain was on the board, and then they gave you a few pieces, and setup was faster. But it fell like a lead balloon. Oh man, I want to come punch somebody. I mean, it just it because was. They didn't support it, it was, that game. It yeah. almost was a mockery of. of it has been Hero over Escape. two years since they showed that game off. All right. Well, they have. A, they started. came out with an expansion, right? No, it needs to be right? dethroned. Hasbro. Ooh. Dang. He dropped, he dropped the pin. 
I know. <laughs> That's an expensive. So my number seven is HeroScape. I love the game. This is one of the ones that I really enjoy playing, but it stays off of my table more often than not because of the setup and the takedown. We need time. inflatable terrain. Ooh, I got a lot of hot air. <laughs> That's something new. We're just full of ideas today, folks. That's right, man. Inflatable terrain. <laughs> Done. Gotta be careful though if you're in the middle of a you game. Flow, you roll it up and you're done. <laughs> you're like, I'm tired of this game instead of flipping the table. Yeah, yeah they're stabbing the, the table. <laughs> stabbing the board is a new thing. Yeah, it is now terrain popping. Terrain popping. All right, let's go. <laughs> Number six. All right, now I'm gonna get more on my soapbox with each one of these, I think. Ooh. Number six for me is a very old classic game, which. I've not actually played the actual game. I played the abridged version of it called uh, Abridged, and that's Bridge. But I could stick in here poker, hearts. I like to put in just a deck of cards. Okay, essentially, sure. right? Yay, deck of cards. Everyone knows what a deck of cards is. Clubs, you know, hearts, diamonds, and all that jazz. That was, and, it's, uh, and one more. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, okay, yes, okay. Yes. Four, <laughs> yeah. four suits. Yes. Just Anywho, sure you understand that there's there a lot of these very suits. popular games, and yet... I mean, I know so many people who know these games, mostly because Windows came with Hearts and uh, Solitaire on it right, or whatever. Right. Uh, but I need, like, a, a lot of trick-taking game comes out, but I'm looking for that trick-taking game that people are like, what? It's being played everywhere. Now, I guess Tichu came close to some degree. Um, and But most of the trick-taking games, we'll play them, and you, you, that word you like, the esoteric word, you know, the... They're interesting, <laughs> but they're well. He, he uses it more than both of us combined he uses times it ten. Every single I know. I say that word day. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but but we we'll, we'll play these and you know we'll find it interesting and fascinating. Right. And right. it will never take off. I guess the thing for me is this is almost like a game looking for a throne. There is no throne here to be had. Are you kidding? There's in the newspaper there are like sections that show people's hands of bridge. Mm -hmm. I want that ripped up and burned out and something else in there. This That's the dumb. thing about I don't it is know trick, that like you said card games or a deck of cards. That's like I, that's like me saying, you know what I want dethroned? Euro games. It's like that, that Dice. broad. Okay, but I'll, know, okay, then I'll be broad, specific. Like I want to see bridge. bridge dethroned. It's only like again, there's a few people who play bridge, and then there's like the spades players who Do are they like own bridge. Newspapers though? Why is bridge in all the newspapers? Probably whoever owns that newspaper is a bridge fan. I don't know. <laughs> Go buy a newspaper. You can put Catan setups. Every set newspaper up. is owned by a bridge fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, there I would like go. to see. I would like to see the like game of old people, which is what I think bridge is. I would it like to see the that, game of old yeah, people yeah, yeah. be dethroned to be like you come Splendor. in. There's, there's grandma and grandpa playing David and Goliath. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. You know what? You know what we're gonna have now? We're gonna have like a million comments from like teenagers that play bridge on a regular basis. Or Do you know any teenager in existence who plays We're going to have, or, we're going to have that now. I'm I just think we're going to have a bunch of comments from older folks saying, you, Mr. Vassal, you, shut up. You shut up. I play hero snake with inflatable terrain. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with that years ago. <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. All right. Um, we're on sixes, yeah? All right. My number six is um, in a family of games that is definitely sitting on top of the throne of, I think, at this point at least, um, games that are in mass market appeal and have been there for quite some time. This is called Ticket to Ride, but my favorite version of this game is Marklin. And okay, I need buddy. a better version of Marklin. Oh, okay. Um, I'm back. And, and the reason I want that is, and it's one specific thing, it's those little point chips that each passenger has to pick up as they go through. I am so terrified, in a geeky kind of way, of losing one of those things. <laughs> he wakes up at 1.30. Ah! I gotta go check my copy. I so take like, right The two is missing. I'm just saying. Oh, you're scared of losing them. I I'm thought you were scared, scared of like sausage finger. No. Oh, oh, oh. I'm you're scared of about... losing oh, those okay, things, okay. man. Because if you lose one, that kind of throws off the entire game. Sure, sure. And we just need an um, updated version of Ticket to Ride Marklin. Splendor with Poker Chip. Something else. No, too big. Um, I thought about that. <laughs> 
Um, we need better passenger chips. We need that. That has to happen. Uh, um, and this is kind of a maybe a little bit of a straying away from the the core of the list, I guess, because it's it's really just asking for an updated version of the same game, not a different game that does what it does better. You get what I mean. Well, there is the the German version yeah. of Marklin, mm -hmm. the Ticket to Ride Deutschland, right? Which is yeah, that's that's the yeah. Yeah, but it just gets rid of passengers completely. Oh, you know, they added them back in in the expansion. Ah, really? What yes. Do they, what do they use for it? Same chips? No, it's not. It's not quite the same mechanism. Okay. But it adds passengers back in. Uh huh. The way it works now. Used to be you would just, you play whatever, and whenever you wanted to, you'd score a line, right? Right. You take off the top one. Yeah. Now, the way you set up the board is you put a few meeples, and they're just colored meeples, they have different shapes, actually, in some of the cities. Some only have one, some have two, three, four meeples in there. Mm -hmm. And then when you make a connection, you take a meeple off of each end, and you put it in your pool. And then at the end of the game, you get majorities. Like if I have the most red meeples, 10 that points or better. whatever. Your prayer has been answered. It's, it's simpler. Better. It's way cleaner. It cleans itself up. And When did this come out? This came out a few years ago. Really? You want it. Only over there, though. Yes. Over there. I have I a do. copy. Over I have a copy there. if you ever want to play it, though. I do. You want do? It. Yeah. yeah. He, How did he, you get these, these, these I got it from Germany. Yeah. Uh, huh? He's got, some, he's got the hookup. I got the hookup. What's your number six? My number six is a game that has been mentioned already. <gasps> But it's not on anyone's list yet. Oh. What? <laughs> How? Is it Cotton Wing Canada? Because Esoteric you brought that up like 10 times. Is the word? <laughs> no, that's not the word I would use right now. No, number six is uh, Dead of Winter. Ah. Which Sam mentioned a while ago, oh. but just in passing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I want is that story driven. See, this one has the theme thing, right? I like the theme. I like the crossroads concept. Great stuff. It's It injects story into a game that could easily have none but i hate that stupid everyone looks like a traitor idea i want a game that gives me that concept of i'm just playing a game and story happens to me to us to the group of playing to the story that's wonderful i just don't want this i don't want it in this game when did dead of winter come out it came out two years ago right no it's been longer than that 2000, I want to say 2000, <clears throat> I want to say 2012, 13? No, no, it's not that old. It's either 14 or 15. Huh. It's got to be a little older than that, maybe 14. Anyway, and they they're supposedly they were coming out with another Crossroads game. Yeah, but right? they like put that on hold because of Dead of Winter. Right. And then they came out with one. I think now they're working on another expansion for Dead of Winter. You okay. want to see a non-Dead of Winter Crossroads game. I do, and I, I'm hoping it's one that, again, keeps the story level real high and... So you does wanna, not give me that whole like, hey, you're you look like a jerk. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Well, you still look like. So one. you basically want Dead of Winter without the traitor and secret objectives. It's more like I want Crossroads and something else. Oh, all right, fair enough. Okay, so that's my number six, Dead of Winter. Number five. All right, my number five is a game that uh, I actually enjoyed in its original incarnation, and then it got remade by Fantasy Flight with a different uh, theme wrapped around it. Well, a different universe wrapped around it. And... The only thing I can think of is Rex. Yes, that is correct. Rex, but I'm going... I'm saying Dune is on my list. Yeah. Dune is, is the, the game that's holding my list, not Rex. Because I wanted Dune reprinted. I didn't want Rex. I wanted Dune Which reprinted. Which is weird, because you love Twilight yeah, Imperium. Yeah, I do... But just because I like Twilight Imperium doesn't mean I think that that universe needs to be wrapped around every game. Okay, fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I wanted the Dune universe on my Dune game. Hmm. And those Herbert people need to give it up and stop being stingy. <laughs> give so you it want, up. You want Rex dethroned by Dune? Yes. Oh, uh, I want Herbert Rex people, dethroned give it up. <laughs> by a new new uh new pieces new components new board new everything dune um i i i would actually not even mind using the sci-fi uh the tv station version of dune oh um I, I would actually not mind that because i think i would like it better it's true these the Herber, however the Herber's sake does seem to give like the rights to the thing to ooh, a, a new tv ooh, network every two or ooh, three years and yeah. worm it up but 
I think the original theatrical version would be the best. Patrick Stewart of. fan. Yes. So um, that's it. My number five is Dune. Also Sting. So you want Dune to Rex. come back and dethrone Rex again? I, yes. I guess is kind of what you're that saying. That is exactly okay. what I want. What do you got? Another question. Right, my number five is the um, what seems to be to me the the king of the simple. And I'm making a very specific uh, example here. Simple hidden movement games. Okay, because there's two for me right now. There is Fear of Dracula, which I love, but it's not simple. Okay, yeah, I can't I can't play that with though. mom and dad. And then there is Letters from Whitechapel, which is the one on my list. Specter Ops. <laughs> which I actually wrote right there, right next to it. Specter Ops, question mark. Not for me, didn't do that. Didn't do what? Didn't do it. Just didn't do it. Didn't do... It didn't do it! Okay. You know? It was like... Some people might say like an esoteric sandworm. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Words! Spewing forth! Nonsensically! No, I... I Spectre Ops is, is still... It's got the geeky factor of the sci-fi big monster hunting you down, which I don't think would appeal to folks who want to play something more Baroque, maybe. And... I still think it he is more. It. We're not smart enough to be the same oh, thing as you. And, and, I still, and, and while it's simpler deafening. than Fury of Dracula, it's still not that simple. Right. Like, you know, the, the Letters from Whitechapel game really boils that game down to I'm hidden, look for me. Uh -huh. Right? But that game is so dry and unattractive and. I don't know. It, I need a game to come along and finally utilize hidden movement in a modern feel that is not that that I can play with mom and dad again. That has that ticket to ride appeal, right? I think the problem that you're having though is that that's a really old mechanism. It is. It's been around forever, but it doesn't mean it, it cannot be used in a fresh design. All the ones that I've seen it in, every time I see one of these games, I'm always thinking, ooh, I hope it's good. It's one of those genres that gets me, right? And every time, I'm like, no. I wonder if you. I wonder if you played Spectre Ops with the new companion app that's coming. Uh, I, I don't know if it's out yet. Um, I would try. That, that might make it I wonder a if that better. might make it more fresh for you. Actually, because I'm instead really of sitting there with that. a pad of paper and a pen, you've got a, like a, a device in front of you, and you're making all your moves that way. I think that might make it feel more that fresh. That might make it cooler, definitely. Because yeah. the board for Spectre Ops, I don't know why you think that that doesn't look great. I mean, that's a beautiful board. The board is okay. And the, the miniatures whole game, are all just, good. Yeah, yeah, but I just found the game to not be very... Uh, it, did, it was like somewhere between... Theory of Dracula and Letters from Whitechapel. No, I got you, yeah. And I wasn't looking for that in between. I want the Letters of Whitechapel killer. I want it to be straightforward. I want it to be family weight and utilize that mechanism very smartly. And, you know, those nuns in the run one, that, that ain't it, you know? And then the ninja one was even worse. I mean, <laughs> what's up with yeah. this mechanism that no one can, can give me a family weight game using it that really nails it? Anyway, so... That's what I'm looking for there. Letters from Whitechapel, that's my number five. My number five is another one that is very, very popular, but, and to clarify, if you enjoy this game, I'm not making fun of your bad choices. All right? And that's, yeah, that's Scrabble. He's just pointing them out. No, the last time I said something about Scrabble, guys, like it's not hard to memorize all the two letter words. It's not hard, it's just dumb. All right. Ooh, I think he just kind of made he fun just of. Said what, he just did what he said he wasn't going to do. No, look, okay, I, I did, but that was deliberate. But here's the thing I, I don't. Scrabble was fine, but it's the top of the heap of word games, and nothing has ever come close to toppling it. That's it true. needs to be toppled. There needs to be a. Be There's a lot of interesting word games out there. I want one to come along and not words with friends because that's essentially Scrabble. I it toppled know. Scrabble, though. <laughs> well, I, don't, yeah, I see people it playing Scrabble. Words with it is Scrabble. It is, yeah. <laughs> but it's not. It's words with friends. <laughs> I, want, I, want a, I want words with enemies, man, where That's you can right. nuke their words on right. the Right, exactly. You know, like Fadudi's words Launch an with airstrike. Boom. <laughs> yes. 60 point word? Nope. <laughs> so, anyhow, I like. I, I, I like word games themselves. I think it's interesting to come up with words. I don't think it's interesting to have to have a little dictionary with you. I mean, they literally sell a Scrabble dictionary yeah. to solve arguments. That's uh, A question, which I don't know. Is a Scrabble dictionary just a dictionary? No, no, it's a bunch of words. That's all it is. 
But is it only words that you can make That's to... That's what a dictionary is, too. No, right, 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 dictionary I'm is like... definitions. <laughs> dictionary is definitions. I, oh, like, they don't give you the definition? They might. I don't know, but I do know that... I don't the, remember. I do know that... It's, it's called a Scrabble dictionary. They've got to give you the definition. It's got to be a word bank instead. The, the, the thing is, it's like the first section is basically all those two-letter words in case you don't know that ZZ is a word or whatever. QI. Yeah. QI is a word. Mm -hmm. You know what it means? Nope. I know it gets. Do you want to use it in a sentence right I now? I know it gets me at least twenty or thirty points every. I assume it's. <laughs> I assume <laughs> it's. That's so idiotic because it's only. No, P I. It, I it assume only it's exists. Chi. Huh? It's chi. The, it only, spelled but words like that only spelled, exist you know, so people chi. can use it. Anyway, like I want a word chi. game that chi. actually. But it's pronounced chi. Chi rewards people. Chi. Yeah. For <laughs> clever word usage, not. Knowing a bunch of obscure words, and, and that it's still a simple game, right? Because like paper bag is good. Yeah, but it's yeah, like yeah. Really, I like that game. I'm, I'm you not know, looking something. for something like that. So anyway, I'd like to see Scrabble yeah, dethroned. It probably won't happen. I think, I think with word games, one. though, that's you have one. it's it, it's a two-edged sword, though, because you on one side you have those people who are going to know those obscure words, but on the other side you're going to have people who are just better at using words. They have a better vocabulary, so they're naturally going to do better at those types of games. It's kind of a double-edged sword. It's a hard thing to uh, yeah, find a medium. I know, on. I know, I know. All right, let's move on. Number four. All right, my number four is uh, another game that I really enjoy, um, and I it's it's set in Vegas, and it's not about gambling per se, which is a cool thing. I like uh, the scenery of Vegas, architecturally speaking. I have to be very specific there because there's a lot of scenery in Vegas that I don't really care for. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, Vegas Showdown <gasps> is one that needs to be dethroned. It needs to be... Torn down and rebuilt, if you would. Yes, there you have Get it. Get it? Yeah! I made anyway, a, a funny... Um, they actually came out with a new version of Vegas Showdown, which it was really the same wasn't as the, first. A, the new version. It was <laughs> somehow just as thinner, play, play, paper play, just as bad. No, I don't know. As actually. the know. original game, uh, as far as components were concerned. So really, you can still swing for the fence here, folks. If you're a uh, board game maker, you still have the chance. Well, I, I guess you'd have to get the rights from. Uh, those who own it. Who owns it now? Is it still Hasbro. not Avalon? Is it still Avalon? Hasbro now? belongs to Hasbro. I mean, Avalon yeah, it belongs to Hasbro. So. You know, those big dogs that he wants dethroned. Um, do something with it, please, because it's a great game and it's a very fun game and it's a spatial game. There's not a lot of those out there. Please. It would be awesome to have a, not even like a different game, but, but a souped up version of Vegas Showdown. With obviously better components, right? right obviously, that's yeah. obvious. We're but not, we're not, that uh, game is now ready for an expansion, for example. Yeah. I mean, that would be good. They could do yeah. good stuff in there. There's you a know? lot there. There's a and lot there, doing yeah. It. I mean, I know there's games like Lords of Vegas, and there's other games that are Vegas-themed, but they just, they're just they just different. No, no, yeah. That casino building uh, right. part Spatial of the game is solid. All yeah. that kind of stuff. Loved it. It needs to be done again somehow used yeah that's a good one my number four vegas showdown all right my number four is almost a crossover with sam hmm? hero clicks oh <laughs> okay but i almost <laughs> half a crossover no 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 actually my initial thought was oh hero escape and i thought well hero escape is not really the king because it's way out of print so yeah. hero clicks is at the top of this i call it light miniatures games where like plastic pre-painted miniatures game, there's almost <coughs> none of these that exist. There's right. a few, right. um, but they're, the, the king is Heroclix. You go to convention, they're own playing Heroclix. Yeah. Heroclix is a fine game. I just don't want to get into learning 2,000 million different abilities and the meta game that's behind it and stuff. Right. I'd love to see something like Heroscape come back and kick Heroclix to the curb. <laughs> no, I like, I, I'm not trying to see Heroclix get ruined, but I mm. need to see Heroclix dethroned. I want to see the new Heroscape. I want to see the next step in that. It's obviously not Magic the Gathering, Arena of the Planeswalkers, too long of a name. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not going to be that uh, game. Hero so Clicks collectible? It. Like, do you buy random? Yeah. Mm -hmm. would you, do you think uh, like an, a living miniatures game model for that sort of game would work? We'll find out when Fantasy Flight announces it. <laughs> That's although probably, although I mean, Imperial Salt is getting very close. Yeah. Very Tell close me to that. about it. Tell <laughs> me about it. Because of the speed they're coming out with this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, 
You won miniatures? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So anyway, my All number right. four, Hero Clicks. My number four is a, a Tom Vassal darling here. And this is Galaxy Trucker. <clears throat> yeah, and it'll be on your list, because why not? Well, Galaxy Trucker is very highly rated. That's party. Pa pa is. Party. That's partly why. Partly why. And um, it has a real-time aspect that not a lot of games even attempt, for one. Or... For good reason. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true, and, and you know, I, I get, I get it. But I would love to see a real-time game that really comes along and, and finally takes this thing down because it's so popular. <laughs> I love the sci-fi theme, but there's such a disconnect between the the different aspects of the game. It's this game in which you are in real time grabbing a bunch of tiles putting together some spaceship. Cool. That could work. I liked it in a game that most people don't like, but Mondo, I think it's called Mondo. I like it in Garbage that game. Show. And it's just because that's the whole game. Once I'm done, I score, I see how I did. Cool. But then Galaxy Truck goes and now takes that garbage ship you just built out of like spare pieces in a couple of minutes and actually puts it through a gauntlet of stuff in which you get to sit and watch your spaceship get knocked apart and have oh, to well, deal well, with like same it's thing like you always say i just don't there's got to be a better thing that can be done i can't remember is galaxy are the tiles turned face up so you can see what you're grabbing no nah, they, they're random aren't they you turn them yeah, face but, up but at it doesn't yeah, matter because you grab it and look at it and if you don't like it you get to throw it in face up face up so everybody else it's can super see what stupid it is. i mean yeah. i just yeah. don't get how that's yeah i i didn't fun. like that game at that point when it got to the point where my ship blows up for no apparently good reason, um, I had already been disliking the game. Because, first of all, it's, like you said, it's real time. And so I'm trying to build a ship that's going to withstand a meteor shower, apparently. Right. Um, uh, on a whim, almost. Right. Well, you're supposed to be, like, driving these rickety old things around. Well, I guess. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> The biggie for me really is the fact that I find the game to be too complex for how quote unquote simple it is. There's a bunch of rules you need to remember, like how much cargo you can have, the stupid aliens, how many you can carry, the colors they are, the little pills, you know, all this garbage. Not pills or energy. They look like pills. You should not <laughs> eat those, by the way. Um, so I, I think there should be a good, simpler, real time game that comes along and finally takes this thing out for good. Just take Galaxy Trucker out back and shoot it. All right. uh, that's my number four. Number three. All right, my number three. I thought about it. I almost put Pandemic Legacy on my list. It's the number one game on Board Game Geek. And it I, needs to be dethroned by Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Right, I mean, by something what? better, right? You know, it's great. Okay. No, but I'm actually going to hit the number two game on Board Game Geek, which Ooh, is Through the Ages. You're a monster. And I really like Through the Ages. I think mm. it's a fine game. However, I like it best with two. Once you get to three or more, it takes a long time. And I am still waiting for that perfect civilization game to show up. Yeah, like short civilization games? Like it doesn't have to be short. It, it doesn't be short, terms. but it could be medium. Sid Meier's Civilization from, I mean, from Fantasy Flight was, was good, but it just didn't grab me. You know, the one from Z-Man Games, Clash also, of Cultures, was a little... It also took like three uh, hours, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I don't know what I, sure. it just wasn't what I wanted. I don't know. I'm still looking for that great civilization game. It's not civilization itself. It's definitely not the old Sid Meier civilization from Eagle. Um, I'm just it's Mega not any Sid. of these new I'm not looking for like some new card version. I know that's what you like. That, no, but that is but that is a card for game version of Civ. The the one you're dethroning. Even though Through the Ages is a card game version, it feels very much like a board game. I don't okay. know if you've played it. No, no, no. No, there's no, a, please. you put the no. cards down and then there's tokens <laughs> on those cards. It's essentially a board game. I don't even know why you asked that question. <laughs> he knows you didn't play that That's game. That's true, I can't <laughs> You're right. I'll, um, walk, I'll walk the other way even if it's just sitting on the table. <laughs> no. If I don't want Z to come in the house and put it in the doorstep, he just drives home. Yes. Yes, it's like it's like garlic for me. <laughs> uh, right. I'm a vampire. Anyway, I'd love to see the perfect Civ game. I think Through the Ages is really good, but because it's only two player for me, I feel that's limiting. I like to see something bigger and better. Cool. Or just better. Okay. What do you got? Number three. That's me. My number three is a um, 
a very story-driven, very thematic horror game called Betrayal at House on the Hill. Oh, Ooh. what a good choice. Betrayal at House on the Hill is a solid decade old now. This came out in 2004? I hear they just released an expansion that feels like they released it at the same time as the original game. Yeah, which I just reviewed, <laughs> and it's like, this is more of the same. Yeah. They didn't put any effort in the expansion. Look, oh, they put effort into like writing the stories, but like, you know, say, better rules. <laughs> Um, and that's what I'm talking about, okay? I like the flavor in, in Betrayal. I like Halloween, a Halloween game in a box sitting on the shelf for Halloween, right? That's all, that's all well and good, but not when the game breaks down one out of four times. Not when I can't figure out how to play as soon as, like, the, the, the haunt happens, and I grab a book, and you grab a book, and we both read, and we both come back and go, what? Uh, huh? What? What am I supposed? Wait, huh? No. Okay. That happens a lot in that game. It's really too, bad. The the it just grinds to a halt every now and then, and or sometimes you you'll end a scenario. You like look at the books and like, oh yeah, I won. <laughs> right. You don't even, that too. You don't even play out the thing. It like, cannot you, be that hard to have a story rich game, in a in a fun exploratory horror setting that works. <laughs> it's just madness. Yeah, and that's the one I thought about. Except that I think Mansion to Madness, as of right now, anyway, and I'm thinking 2.0 here, doesn't have nearly the the, the breadth and depth of right. Mansion content. Madness is just Cthulhu, Story, though. Right? Betrayal yeah. has a hill had like it's 20 dolls right? and yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's cool. It just doesn't work very well, unfortunately. So that's if they came out with that game. So rich story-driven horror game. So Fantasy Flight needs to take Mansion to Madness engine. And slap a more generic horror theme on it. Ooh, I'd buy that game. That could work, actually, oh, yeah. Are you listening, Mr. Peterson? You heard it from me wow, first. I, that's true. Christian, we copyright this whole video. Don't. <laughs> don't. Everything in this video, hard ideas. Don't leave me out in the cold, Christian. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> All right, so anyway, that's my three betrayal. <laughs> What's your three, Sam? All right, my number three is a, an older game. And, and I don't know that it's uh, really on top of anything. It's just a game that I really enjoy. And it has been... Uh, tried to be revamped once, and uh, it, it almost was a not an upgrade but a downgrade um, in more respects than one. I'm talking about Nexus Ops, um, Fantasy Flight version. The box cover was amazing. Um, the artwork was amazing. Components not so much. Really? Um, yeah. And hey, maybe this new Giants game will be thrown it. Maybe so. Maybe so. We got to get it played and see if it will. But uh, Nexus Ops. At least in the original Avalon Hill version, yes, yes. Oh, Hasbro. It had a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It had a monolith, and it had a monolith that actually stood up off. Well, I'm gonna argue that the, the monolith was a yes, was like a cardboard uh, but, fold. Did it, did, like yeah, I understand. But in you the Fantasy Flight version, frame. they didn't even have a 3D version. It's just flat. It's just a tile. Hey, wait, since I'm going to make you a 3D printed one, though? Yes. Oh, that doesn't count, But that man. doesn't count. No, no, I know that. I'm just yeah, that out. doesn't so count. Jealous, that's all. And I forgot to use it the last time I played it. What's wrong with you? Anyway, it's I'm going to put it in the box next time. Um, it's sitting <laughs> on my desk. Um, but it was, I mean, it was supposed to be an upgrade. I was like, oh, finally, we're going to actually get a monolith. No, you're just going to get a tile. I hate to keep bringing this bell, but inflatable terrain. <laughs> There's a monolith. <laughs> um, no, everything about the game is is great. I love the card play. The card, the cards, man, the cards needed need an upgrade badly, well, especially from the original version. Uh, the miniatures were great in the original version. I love the translucency of them. Um, I loved how they glowed, kind of. <laughs> they uh, did. If they I've, put I've a tried dark, it. If you put done a dark it? light on it. I, I've done um, it. I've I did never, it. I've never tried it. I but did it. I've it's pretty it, cool. I mean, they it. light up. Yeah. 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 Love that. Loved it all. Uh, when Fantasy Flight put it all out, that went away. Yeah. The monolith went away. Um, all of the other graphic design was great, but it just seemed like not as good a copy. Uh, I think so, you used the, the, the components of the Fantasy Flight version, the cards and stuff, with the models from the original, and then get a 3D monolith. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do it's all like, that. I mean, you got a Frankenstein. <laughs> you shouldn't have thing. to do all <laughs> Nexus Ops. So my number Love three me. is Nexus Ops, ripe for being dethroned by a better version of itself. Number two. My number two is a another game that is very, very uh, story-driven. In fact, this one is just about all story. I'm talking about Tales of the Arabian Nights. 
That's another good one. Wow. Tales of the Arabian Nights is kind of like a role-playing game, or like, I guess the better uh, the better uh, simile there is a choose-your-own-adventure book in board game form, right? That's cool. And I really enjoy that aspect. But I have a couple of issues with it. The game's really long, for one, for really no good reason. You know, I, you should be able to quit a little sooner than that. And then it has a bunch of random stuff that happens to you that is random and also isn't really fun. I think it's fun, but I, I can I can see why you don't. Well, like really long and random doesn't go well together. Oh, okay. okay, you got to give me that at least, right? And so that's what I'm looking for, a game that will give me a great story. Something epic, something thematic. But allow for some choices and a game there. And I'm not talking about above and below, which I know sort of attempts to do that. Because there's... There's almost too much game in that one, right? And by that, I mean the storytelling part is just a little sliver of it. I want a story-driven game. I want all the reading. I want all that stuff. I want awesome stories to come out of this thing. And a game on top of it, you know? That's what I thought Arabian Nights was missing. There was no game. It was just a bunch of, you know, like, movie clips, right? Strung together with random stuff in between them that didn't really pan out to give me a, an overall story. I want to be able to get together in a month and talk about, hey, remember that time that this happened and then you did this and this happened. You don't get that in, in Arabian Nights. It's just, you, we read this and then this thing happened to you. Do you think that maybe you might be asking for close to the impossible though? Because whenever you have passages of a story that, you, that need to be read, you have different people that have different reading abilities. They're going to read longer than others. I'm not worried about that. No, I mean you want a you want a shorter story driven. No, what he's saying is Tales of Arabian Night. You have to go. You have to play it for a really long time to get to your goal. You're not reading like a few passages. Yeah, it's you're like a like, really really long. You're reading game. like no, that's eighty what, that's each what or I'm something. Saying, though, anytime you have reading, it's naturally going to be a longer game. Oh no, that's people... okay. Yeah, that's okay. If it's like an hour, I'm okay with an hour even. Okay. Arabian Nights is longer than that. No, it's like two hours, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, it's just silly. And I think the, the model that could really nail this, it is, yes, <laughs> is um, a time story style game. I think that would be great. If they gave you basically a choose your own adventure book, chopped up into a book book, like, you know, with choices to jump around here and here, with then a game structure and the plug-in model. So what's missing then? from saying that Time Stories has done what, you, what you're asking to do? That it's not the reading and then making a choice and then reading and then making a choice. I mean, it's close to that, but it's, it doesn't yeah, that's what feel... I thought, I thought Time Stories satisfied much, your criteria. It, do, you think, do you think Time Stories well, does it? Much that's it. what you, I think would actually satisfy You go to the thing, you look at what you're doing, and now you have to decide what to do, yeah? It's, a, it's like a role-playing game almost is really what Time Story steps in there and, and, and kicks up and you, down. That's how you describe Tales of Arabian Nights. Not quite the quite same by thing. By your own words. No, no, no. I guess I want the big book with the stories. Okay. Oh. You know what I mean? Actually, I don't want that. I want, it and I, you want, whatever. I want an app now that they will consistently add new stuff well, to. Well, sure. It. Okay, I guess. But, you know, that's. I just want something. Again, Arabian Nights, I remember before I played it, I so wanted to play it. <laughs> it sounded so good, yeah. and I was very disappointed by it. Nah, so I'm hoping like something it. will come along and shut Tom up. <laughs> like a sock, like a smelly uh, Go, sock. Go, Sam, hurry. Like it's getting close knock to the kidnapper house. range over here. All right, my number two is a sci-fi, what I'm going to call a version of Kingsburg, and it's called Aliens Front, Alien Frontiers. And um, <clears throat> I like the game. I just don't like the way it looks. But what about um, those rocket dice? No. Worst idea ever. No, it was a great idea. Worst execution <laughs> okay. of worst, an idea. Yeah, worst implementation or execution ever. But anyway, I, I want that same Kingsburg feel, but in a better looking version in sci-fi. I don't even care if you really change some of the mechanics and rules up a little bit. Um, I just want, I, I, I love how Alien Frontiers plays. But it looks so drab and boring to me. Really? Yeah, it does. It you don't does. like that faux sci-fi, nineteen fifty sci-fi stuff? Sci That's not sci-fi anymore. I guess it's alternate history almost. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. But it's that's like back in the fifties. That was sci-fi. 
We're in the 2000s it, now. It, That's it, not sci-fi. It kind of lands for me in a similar uh, world as to like something like Scythe. It's like alternate history sci-fi. You know what I mean? It's like mechs. No, no, no. But they're in a, I, in a different I guess. world. I just, don't, I just don't view Scythe as being sci-fi. It's alternative history. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. two different genres yeah, to yeah. me. So um, I, I, I really just, I mean, I guess You actually sounds, want for real sci-fi looking stuff. Yes. You know, stuff that now. Not like Isaac Asimov looking right. shit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. That's what I want. Hmm. That's what I, I want. I, I find it charming. My moment. number two. Alien Frontiers. All right, let's keep shooting up sacred cows here. My number two <laughs> is only at the top of the heap because of the benefit of time. It's been around for a thousand years, I think, or something Finally, like that. Finally, Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> Chess. And here's wow. the thing. I can Chess. Understand. Yeah, I picked... I, I'm enraged. No, and you're a, not. You actually agree with this one. sir. Harumph. I didn't get a harumph. I didn't put guy. Go on this list because Go is its own thing. It's a lifestyle game. Chess is a lifestyle game, too. But the thing about chess, which drives me nuts is that there are so many equally as good abstract strategy games out there uh -huh. that do not get the same buzz at all, or even come close. Okay. And they are fascinating, wonderful games. I want one of them, I don't care which one even, to dethrone chess. I want there to be an abstract strategy Checkers. game out that just... <laughs> yeah. Checkers does not have that depth of strategy. I know. Okay, good, just clarify. But there's a lot of games, I mean, like for example, Santorini. Amazing game, but it will never come close to chess. It's not, honestly, I mean, but that game with all the cards and stuff is probably not, I hate to use the word, but elegant enough to dethrone chess. That's fine, but any of the GIF series is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, lots of these games are, and chess just rules supreme. There's books, clubs, chess boxing, which is still one of the weirdest things in existence. What is Have you chess heard of that? boxing? Chess boxing is when the, these two people... They're playing a game of chess and they're boxing at the same time. I defeat one of your pawns, I get to punch. No, 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 no. No, this is no. This is, this is a real sport. They will pause the chess game and then you go in and start boxing, right? And then they'll pause the boxing game and they go back to chess. And if you lose by checkmate or you get knocked out, you win. I mean, or you lose. I'm sorry, you lose. I feel like we've fallen into some dimensional rift. Help! I fall and I can't know, get right? up. This is a real thing. Are you serious? It's a real sport because Man. you're getting beat in the head and so it's harder and you're making the chest moves and you gotta... What in the world? Dude, I am so in. Are you gonna I'll watch, would you watch it? I'll be awful at the chess part, but hopefully I can I can whoop on a chess player. I mean... <laughs> No, no, these guys are not like that weak either. You know, they're, oh, yeah, they're, no, they're, they're going to be good at both is the problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. But as you're getting, anyway, so, but I'm saying that's, there's chess boxing, but there's not other things, right? Chess is like, in, in, there's movies, there's a Broadway show about chess. You know, the chess is just like, it's ingrained in society, and it needs to fall to something better, and there are better games out there. And I think it will, the only thing missing is what you said already, time. It just has, it just has that one leg up. And it's... I, I think it's being, it's the, uh, it's the common integer, right? Right. Everybody and knows it because everybody has it. seen one, everybody has played one, probably, or most people, yeah. and it's been around for hundreds and hundreds also, of years. Also, clarify, I'm not saying chess is even a bad game, I just think it needs to be detailed. Yeah, also, also, I agree I can, with you, that's I a great choice. I can go and buy a, a game of, a copy of chess for like five bucks. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't have to spend... 45 bucks on a copy of Czar or Yinch. Well, it's also like on almost every computer. Right. right. Chess was on the calculators when I, you I mean, know, You're talking everywhere. about a huge paradigm shift with I'm, that one. I'm, right. This is just my wish list. It's not going to happen. I think they should make white, red, red and black. <laughs> That's also copyrighted? All right, let's go on. And finally, number one. All right, here we go. I got my special new 20. What is that? Right. Look at that. It's oh, beautiful. Oh. I feel a 20 roll coming. one. He got a was three. Close. Three. Lame. 16. I believe that's more than... Oh. Sam keeps winning these Roll rolls. off for everyone. No, you don't get to roll. Oh, man. Here we go, Sam. Go ahead. Go no, ahead, three, Sammy. Three, Same time. Two, one. Psych! <laughs> you both did it, you slacker. 16 <laughs> again. A one. <laughs> I shot myself in the foot. Yes. All right, what's the order? We're getting ready for that live. Uh, I don't know. I'm just go down this way. All right. I'm trying to think what your number one would be. I My number one is a game that Sam really likes, and I enjoy too. Oh, man. But Sam really likes it. Blood Rage. 
No. No, I can't. I really I like Imperium that still. It doesn't need to be dethroned, huh? That's not on. That's not on a thing. It's a game that I find, and it's 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 genre, or I should say, it's theme, and all games of this theme seem to not get it right. Zombie side, Black Plague. No, Vikings. Oh. And Wait. the game is Fire and Axe. Fire and Axe. Okay. Which I enjoy, and it's a Euro-y kind of game. You travel around, you pillage by rolling a couple of dice. The game, the, the, the Viking flavor so there. So you like Fire and Axe? I do. Okay. But Fire and Axe is just about the most viking -y game out there. Blood Rage? No. And it's still not that Viking-y. It's the most Viking-y Euro game out there. What's a better Viking game? Blood Rage. Blood Rage is, I don't consider a Viking game. Oh, so you want like a realistic Viking game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Blood Rage is fantasy Vikings. Okay. All right. Right, like every time I play a Viking game, I like that theme a lot. Vikings for me, it's like right up there with like pirates. I really like pirates, right? Pirates and Vikings, great. And every time I play one, it's like... Raiders of the North Sea is pretty Viking-y. It didn't feel that Viking-y to me. <clears throat> is it one we played? Are you play with you? Yeah. Well, you didn't like... It's no, okay, Raiders. it's I mean, okay. That, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the one I just reviewed. The one I just reviewed is not Viking-y at all. Uh, where you're building ships. No, I think you mean the one I played with you, which Raiders is like villages, two villages or something like that, right? Yeah, you start down yeah. here and then you start traveling upwards and you're yeah, continuing. Yeah, that's a good Viking thing. Yeah, that's a good Viking right, so you want thing. a better one. I want one that really nails that theme. I guess I almost want Betrayal at House on the Hill, the Viking version. Ooh, I'd play like, that. I want that. I want it. I'm talking like Viking flavor through the horns, which they didn't have. You know what I mean? Well, I do have villainous Vikings sitting on my uh, That one, yeah, I haven't played. But home. like, you know, the Vikings with the big rondelle looking thing? No. Even the one we played, Odin's donkey or whatever. Of, in the name of Odin. No, it's Odin like some card game. For Odin. It's like some flat card game for me, you know? And like, there's just no game that has a Viking theme that when I'm done, I'm like, I have pillaged my fair share. I don't, you know, it doesn't do it for me. <laughs> So that's what I want. A really story heavy, thematic, realistic Viking game. All right. That's hmm. my number one. Do you think? My number one, I already mentioned Hero Clicks as the light war a miniature game that needs to be dethroned. And this one, it's, I'm, I'm calling it this one's going to happen anyway. And that's Warhammer 40K. Ooh. Like, Look, uh, okay. Warhammer 40K has had a stranglehold on the industry for a really long time. Now that the cost of miniatures has come down, or at least molds has come down, they are now being threatened on all sides by all sorts of miniatures. But Games Workshop has basically done what they feel like doing. And Warhammer 40K is now in its seventh edition or eighth. It's in one of those two. Um, and First there need one, then the other, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, there needs to come along a game that dethrones this. Now, some people are probably saying, oh, there is such a game, War Machine or whatever, Hordes. None of them have yet. And as far as I can tell, War Warhammer is still top of the heap. Right. They did manage to make other games top Warhammer Fantasy by basically torpedoing their own game. Um, <laughs> they restarted the whole thing and everything. Yeah. But um, Age of Sigmar is gaining some steam, though. It's gaining some steam, but it's not the top of the heap in, in no. Fantasy. And it hasn't been around as long as Warhammer Fantasy as it was either. So. And I would like to see another game come and beat up on 40K. That doesn't have to be similar either. I don't need... Chaos Marines and Space Marines. It could be another whole sci-fi universe, but, and I know people keep trying to do this. Every time we go to a convention, there's some new miniatures game that's being debuted. Hmm. Uh, usually they're horror themed nowadays, but you know, or whatever. I love to see something take down 40K, if only because I think the industry does better when there's not one giant company controlling most of the market. There are many stores that we've gone to that are controlled by yeah. 40K. I guess I could have put Magic Together in my list too. Yeah, you could have. I don't think Magic the Gathering needs to be taken down, though. That game no, is no, strong, and it's doing very well. And 40K feels like a dead game that's still being played. I don't know how to explain that's it. The thing about it is uh, I think that's probably because you don't play it anymore. Is it stagnant, though? I don't think so. It's, uh, there I is mean, new again, stuff. They're again, they, they're, they, uh, um, they are... I, again, I haven't, played, I haven't played the game, but I mean, I'm, I've kind of been watching... Uh, from a distance, so right. to speak. But, I mean, they're coming out with new stuff for the universe. They're coming out with uh, board games that use the miniatures in a board game format. And the board games are, at this point, they're still kind of lackluster to what else is out there. I'm um, just trying to be honest. But um, they're trying to evolve. Uh, you know what I should throw they're in there, too, is also evolve. affordability. 
I think a I miniature think... game that's slightly more affordable because they are the king of the heap. They're charging a good chunk of change for these miniatures, and there's no question the miniatures are amazing. All right, well, not, and, not, and I think that's another that. thing. That's another reason why it's going to be hard to dethrone uh, Warhammer 40k because I, I mean, I've looked. I don't see miniatures out there that are as good as Games Workshop's miniatures. I, I just don't see it. I mean, for the ones that you have to put together. And uh, some of the single mold ones that are coming out now are really, really good. I'm not going to down that at all. But that's part of the thing. I mean, you when you look at... I don't I don't buy that Mantic is as good as Games Workshop. I think Kingdom Death Monsters not even close. Are... Oh, throttle him. I guess the thing I could, do the that would do it for, for the me, video. the thing that might come along and do it, in my opinion, again, and from an outsider's perspective here, is a very solid IP on a miniatures game. Like, think... Star Wars miniatures game, but I know they've done similar things, but in this style, in in Warhammer 40k style. That would be pretty cool. And like, you know, amazing miniatures, they have a breath there to yeah, pick see, from. See, the thing is, you wouldn't buy it because you would still have to put the miniatures together. You're right. And, and I wouldn't buy it them. because miniatures. Oh, yeah. Because and measuring. You have no soul. Um, uh, but, I don't know. I, 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 did, monster, son? I, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen, uh, and if it does happen, it's not going to be anytime soon. I'm calling within ten years. They're not the biggest. Well, that's not biggest. anytime soon. A ten. decade in the future? Come on. That's that's. Pfft. That's not anytime soon. By that time, our iPhones are going to be in our brands. Bro. Okay, what do we got? <laughs> What's your number one? All right, my number one has actually been mentioned already, but it was not again on somebody's list. Mm-hmm. Was it Magic the Gathering that we just said? No, it better not be not. Cosmic Encounter. No, mm-hmm. it's right. not Cosmic Encounter. I thought you put that Pandemic. in the list spiteful. My number one Pandemic. for this is Pandemic Legacy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Legacy. You said Legacy. Oh, really? Pandemic Legacy. Well, that was... For, to have its predecessor clocking in at number 58, and then this one clocks in at number one on Board Game Geek. Are you talking about predecessor as Pandemic, not Risk Legacy? Correct. Okay, okay. Yeah, correct. Yeah, um, because that's what Pandemic Legacy is. It's basically, pan- it's, I mean, it's Pandemic with a couple things thrown into it. I think that's that's making uh, how do you with play a couple pan- of things thrown how do you, in. It's, how do you it's play sort of Pandemic Legacy? robbing it of a lot of... How do you play Pandemic Legacy? You play Pandemic Legacy... Look, when you open the, the exact- and then you... <laughs> <laughs> when, when you play Pandemic Legacy, you are essentially doing the exact... You're going through the same motions... That you do is you play pan- when you play true. Pandemic. This is true. And the only difference is a couple of things that are sprinkled so in. So you want a game, you want a, a seafall that you enjoy, essentially. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to the absolute, this game just needs to be dethroned. There is no logical reason, other than that people have voted for it. Um, for it to be number one on board it's game just, this is just pure anarchy then yes, it well, what do you want but I thought you really like, like what do you want to come I do along? like Pandemic Legacy I do I don't think I don't think that there's anything that needs to be added to Pandemic to make it better or anything like that I'm really confused it just doesn't need to be on number one this is like the epitome of hipster like it's now one so you hate it I'm no, super no, no, confused no I don't hate it. it he just says it needs to be dethroned that's all it, buy it, something better no <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is well, it should be better. It should be better. I dude. liked it before it was popular. That's right. That's exactly what, <laughs> what it is. Oh my goodness. I just don't understand what? why Pandemic is sitting at 58, but Pandemic Legacy rocketed to number one. It is essentially. Like it more? Ah, but see, that's it. Why? Because there's more stuff in it. I guess. I love the legacy part. I think it's just because of simple, sincere hype. And people liked it because everybody else was liking it. But you liked it first. Uh, I wouldn't even go oh that goodness. far. I'm just saying oh there's no reason, in my opinion, for it to be sitting on number one when it's... Well, soon it'll be number two. When season two comes wow. out and takes and the see, number one this spot. This is probably why, at the crux of it, Ugh, all this hype, hype, false hype. I am very, I am very, very anxious and trepidatious about about season Ooh, two. It's trepidatious. I don't. It's word of the day. I do not. I do not think it's going to be nearly as popular as season one. Why? Well, that's actually, we should you're take probably, some bets on that, too. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I'm sure you're right. It's, I, it's lost that uh, 
the surprise element, right? I mean, that's, well, it's that's not cool. not only that. I think uh, just from what I've heard, I think they're they've added some stuff into it that is not going to be as widely liked by well, everybody. We'll see. Who knows? All right, well, those are our overrated games. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of hateful comments, so bring them. Overrated games. <laughs> yeah, we, we already did this one. Overrated, you're right. The games that need to be dethroned. I was thinking about overrated games as a future <laughs> That's list. kind of the number one there was. <laughs> okay, so let us know what you think should be dethroned. What games would you like to say dethroned? If you say Cosmic Encounter, you're banned. <laughs> no, no, you can say it. That's fine. Say what you think. Debate in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. See you, Garcia. Goodbye. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, y'all.